for those of you who don't know Stan's background, it's it's quite unique. Uh, it qualifies him to talk about many things with authority. Tell folks about your background a little bit, Stan, and, and why you know so much about the whole defense industry. Well, uh, back in 71, I was recruited to, uh, when I was living in Dallas, or gate outside of Dallas, I was recruited by Dr. Edward Teller's research group to go to Australia and work with their team down there on developing advanced technologies and propulsion like anti-gravity for saucer craft that they were building and various other things for submarine uh, craft. You just mentioned Edward Teller, you mentioned anti-gravity, and you mentioned it with conviction and reality. So if we're doing serious anti-gravity research, which the Germans were doing during World War II in the 70s and you were involved with it, yeah. where might we be now? When I was inducted into the program, it was because I was going to, to file a patent on a, a, a way to make a plasma or dynamic plasma flying saucer. I hadn't prepared the papers yet. I was thinking about it. I don't even know how they knew what I was doing at home in my lab. But when they did induct me... <laughs> they, they know everything. <laughs> well, they do. And when they, they showed me you know, a lot of stuff. And, and to my amazement, this is 1971. In, in the 50s, they'd already had uh, you know, crude anti-gravity. And they had built... The craft I was going to patent, they built, tested, tried several of them, found the problems with it, went to the next step. Uh, you know, so they wanted me to join, knowing that I'd already gotten to that, that stage, that they were at 15, 20 years ahead of me. Uh, this, this is the amazing thing. Sorry. Do they have anti-gravity? Oh, yeah. How much anti-gravity? How much super technology? That's the question. I mean, can they make a ship that's a mile in diameter and make it work and fly fast like it was a little craft, but, but a huge thing like that? Yes. Now, these things impress most of the engineers and physicists on the planet that say, well, look, it's impossible to support a craft like that, even if it were just a, a Boeing 707 or something. You can't hold it in the air for 10 minutes in stationary position. just can't do it. And, of course, the argument comes back for me. It says, well, what about hot air balloons? They stay up a lot longer than that, you see, in one spot if you want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, of course, they say, well, that doesn't count. That's specific gravity. That, that, we, we write that out. But the technology he is so advanced now, and I haven't been in the program since, oh gosh, the the, uh, the mid-70s. So at that time, the stuff that I was told about or saw or worked on was so advanced that the, the average person on the planet that, that was told this would just say impossible, impossible. Was this, der- was, was this derivative of, uh, of crashed uh, technology, or do we come up with it on our own? Well, part of it, and part of it was working with these beings uh, that uh, that built those crashed craft you're talking about, and other craft as well. So we did make treaties with them, uh, contracts, and we did build uh, development uh, facilities underground and under uh, water, uh, you know, and under the South Pole, uh, that new Swabenland where the Germans had been you know, during World War II and prior to that. And we did make technology and technology manufacturing facilities in jointly occupied basis with these uh, quote unquote alien beings. Mm-hmm. In the late 70s, after I had left the, the, the uh, operation, our bases had wars and battles, and we were kicked out of it. The beings, these alien beings, we'll just call them that, they arrived here short of technology and manufacturing processes, infrastructure. They needed to build weapons to fight against a, a larger enemy uh, to them than, to, than we are to them. And they needed us to build the infrastructure to start out. And once they got to the point where they could build everything they needed without us, they kicked us out of our bases. I mean, bang, 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 kicked us out. It was a, it was a war. Huh. That was the late 70s. And after that, I don't know what's happened. There were some fatalities involved, I hear. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I mean, look, imagine these beings claim to have been here on Earth when we were created in the Garden of Eden thing. I mean, that's far back and claim to have documents and, and videos and stuff like that to show us that they were there. And that technology 3,000 years ago, I mean, what have we done in 100 years, you know, the, from the horse to the, to the moon? 3,000 years at least? How can you fight technology like that? So they have, they essentially feel that they have a, a real estate deed that uh, supersedes us. Uh, Absolutely. We're Absolutely. just in, interlopers. Kind of like the Israelis on the West Bank. <laughs> 